So, two days uh, until the Mo Circuit Bend challenge is due. Been working on it since the day it was announced, or at least I've been thinking about it. It's pretty um, been pretty excited about it. Can't lie. Um, what about it? So, I was thinking of ideas. Went to a uh, a swap meet with my family when I was visiting in Florida. And I was looking around for little toys to bend, and I saw something that I thought was the perfect circuit bend. I saw a DD6, a Yamaha, had little drums. I'm like, cool. So I buy it, five bucks, easy, done. And then I Google and see other people circuit bent it. Pretty frustrating. Can't lie. It was very frustrating. I thought it would be very unique. But it made me think, what, what can I do to make it more unique than other people? How can I take it to the next level? Technology, um, been a NAM the past few years, and I've seen everyone tries to incorporate iOS devices into NAM, so I'm like, mm, I could do that. So I thought, why not incorporate an iPad to control my bend? Hmm. And I found this very nice um, Intersil IC, that uh, it's a nice little switching IC. So I thought, you know what? Combine uh, my iPad with this IC and do a bend. Add some presets, because how many uh, circuit bends do you know that have presets? Yeah, that's what I thought. So, um, got the DD6, um, popped it open, started probing around, and fried it. And within a day, fried, done. Pretty upset. I fried a, uh, I found it, I fired a voltage regulator, a really funky one. But lucky for me, I was able to find one from a friend, and I swapped out the, uh, the voltage regulator, and done. It was back to working. And then I commenced on the circuit bend. The actual, uh, the hardware took about four, maybe five hours on a weekend. It was pretty easy, uh, straightforward. It's the kind of stuff I enjoy the hardware the most. But that was done pretty quick, and the rest of it was the firmware. Man, the I actually the, the iPad app was pretty uh, pretty simple and straightforward to get going to. As far as sending MIDI and um, the graphics and all, I didn't do anything fancy as far as using Objective C to its full extent. I did um. I did it as easy as possible with all the buttons and everything, nothing too crazy. But um, no matter what I did, the firmware on the microcontroller that was controlling the matrix chip had to be special. So um, it was it was pretty difficult. So I worked on that for a bit, um, got discouraged, gave up for a few weeks, got back on it. But um, a lot of problems with it, and um, I guess that's with any development. But uh, I just want to note that uh, I guess I'm a, I'm a product designer for uh, Ernie Ball Music Man. Pretty uh, fun job. So I, I took the uh, product design extent uh, uh, approach to this per se, and um, I thought you know it was kind of a cool thing to use. And, you know, people like menus and buttons and user interface UI is a very clicky word. Um, you don't really think of UI when it comes to circuit bending. You think, usually when it comes to circuit bending, you think a bunch of switches and buttons and just wherever you could fit it, you put it. But you know, I, I thought UI, because UI was the future, because people want to interface quite well with their usability of things. So um, that's where the iPad app came in, and there's menus in the microcontroller. But anyways, I went off on a little tangent there. So the contest, when it was announced, had some very fun rules. I, I think it was very fun, um, fun contest this year. Last year I was I get to build a sampler, and it's pretty difficult, I would say, to do from a easy standpoint, or not easy standpoint, but from a DIY standpoint, or a replicatable standpoint. I'll say that because, I mean, if you want to build a sampler, you gotta you, get your own your ROM and everything going. You gotta you gotta like build it up and get it all right with because good flash going. Um, but yeah, that was last year's. Anyways, this year's, the rules were under $70 were the parts. At first, that was kind of daunting. I was like, okay, 70 bucks, that's impossible. But this year, I ended up at, I think I was at $54. So I was still a little short. I could still add some LEDs. But you know what? Why ruin a good thing? And the other rule was it has to run off of 9 volts. At first, I was like, you know what? I want some... Uh, I want I want some fancy power supplies. I want to do some crazy stuff. You know I'm gonna I'm gonna go shoot for the moon. And then when I picked up this DD6, I realized you know it runs off of um, 
double A's, but it's nine volts, ready to go. So I uh, I took the power from that, and the uh, the development board for the microcontroller has a uh, regulator on it to regulate the five volts coming into it from the USB. If you want to power it from USB, but it can also regulate other voltages. So I just tapped the nine volts out from the microcontroller or from the DD6 and I ran it into the voltage regulator of the development board and it popped out the 3.3 .3 volts that were necessary for the uh, for the uh, microcontroller but I also had to add in a, uh, a voltage regulator of my own to get the negative supply rail for the uh, the matrix chip um, to allow the proper headroom for the, uh, the audio throughput so um, hardware wise I would say it was pretty uh, straightforward a little voltage regulator you know the standard um, this just the standard regulator and um, it all worked out pretty well hardware wise what else did I add hardware I added um, some diodes um, to the LED circuit on the DD6 because the DD6 has two LEDs that blink to the tempo and I really wanted to get tempo out so I could sync it with my sequencers and my Korg Volkas and everything. So um, I put it some diodes just to make sure nothing goes, nothing goes crazy. You, know, you don't want you don't want craziness. Craziness is bad. You don't want craziness. So I put it in the diodes for some protection, and I got a nice sync out. That was pretty cool. And what else do I want to say? Um, this is a pretty fun band. Now that it's working, I. Um, I'm excited to use it because so you have your list of 99 uh, drum rhythms on the DD6 and they're pretty cool some of them are pretty fun you have like some swing you have some mambo you have your rumba you have your salsa you have some weird polonaise things I don't even know what that is some like weird 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 things you have some waltzes and um but with this bend though if you choose the proper connections you can uh you get some really funky rhythms that repeat over themselves. And the nice thing about s scrambling the ROM is that whatever weird sound you make, it, it's rhythmically repeatable. It's not like it's completely random and you'll never be able to get it again. Like, I know if I make that one matrix connection, I could repeat that again. If I make that one another one or any other matrix connection, those two will react pretty weird. But that weirdness is repeatable. So that's a really cool aspect of the band is that it's glitchy, it's crazy, it's chaotic, but it's repeatable. And if that's what you want, you could get it and you could dial it back anytime. And with the presets that are saved with the EE prom, you could recall any up to 10 presets on your own. And you could also get random presets if you would like. So I thought that was pretty fun. And what else? I feel like an old man rambling. Um, it's been quite a whirlwind uh, circuit bend. I made uh, some friends on Twitter over the uh, circuit bend discussing it. Pretty cool. Code Wizard and all y'all. It was very nice and helpful. And thanks for the words of wisdom. Especially last night when I was I was about to give up. I was pretty upset not being able to get the, the uh, screen working with the SPI because of the clock. But I figured out the clock thing. So I almost gave up. But thanks for not making me give up. Um, what else? So um, one more time to go over everything that I did. I added a Atmel A3BU explained dev board to the uh, DD6 along with a matrix chip and a uh, regulator. And using that I could scramble up the ROM. But to control it and to control what's being scrambled I made an iPad app with a grid of 8 by 16 buttons that you could press and you can make presets. Pretty useful, pretty crazy. So um, for the rest of this video it will just be pictures of the project and the audio will be um, straight from the DD6, straight from the circuit bend. Some of it will be by itself, some of it will be run through a filter because after all the uh, distortion and crazy ROM craziness there is um, a lot of harmonics and just crazy noise and chaos, chaos. So um, to tame the chaos, I, I ran it through some filters. Fight a Moger Foger by Moog, very nice Moger Foger. Um, I'd be able to uh, use that as a filter, but I don't. So I have a uh, Korg MS-20 and some analog rack filters that I will run it through. 
Now I'll mention what I'm doing with each, but first, here is just the DD6 with the circuit bend. Enjoy! Alright, so first off, let's try a stock DD6. Here is preset 00, for example. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Here is a Polynesian beat. For those of you who don't know, this is what it is. Very Polynesian. A Biguini. Let's try a Biguini. Nice, Biguini. Let's try some funk. All right. Besides the presets, you could also get access to the individual drum sounds. And then you could also assign different sounds to the drums. So those are all the drum sounds available, and the, um, the, the connections on the matrix affect some sounds more than others. Um, I will go ahead and say it's pretty random, but if, if you look far enough into it, it's not random. But I'll say it's random. So um, let's make a matrix connection. Let's get, um, let's get a sound going. How about a Motown beat? Oh yeah, all right. Let's make a preset on the matrix. Let's try a random one. Don't know what it's gonna do, let's see. Somewhat chaotic? Okay, let's undo that. Back to normal. All right, let's make another one. That's the second one, nothing happened yet. A third one, fourth one. The fourth one did something, let's see what else. All right. Chaos, chaos, chaos. All right. Let's clear that all. Let's clear that. So. Let's see. Let's see what the sounds make to the individual drum sounds. So we got our bass sound. Let's see what we can do with the bass. Something like that's pretty useful. You guys go. Stuff like that I think is pretty darn cool. So those are two little random connections. Let's see what else we can make. Nothing happened with that extra connection. Here's another one. All right, another one. Let's see what else. See, that's just going crazy on its own, but. See, something like that, I could sample on my MPC 2000, and I think it would sound pretty cool. So um, let's see, if you make all the presets, nothing happens. Everything gets way screwed up. But um, it's a launching pad if you want to get rid of some and find out a way to make them work per se. Like right now, all the presets are made except for a few. And it's not making sounds. There's some connection somewhere that's screwing things up. And I will not be able to find it. But if I clear it again, you have back to your regular uh, sounds. And now let's plug in the modified DD6 into the MS20's external signal processor. We'll get the audio right back out of that to the external signal in, but we will also take the trigger out into the trigger in of the MS20 and the frequency to voltage out into the, uh, the VCO fil uh, CV in. So without the VCOs, here is the uh, DD6. Let's get a speed metal sound going. See, that's kind of crazy. Let's try something else. A rap beat. Mess around with the filter. Oh, 
chaos. Let's uh, clear that. Let's, let's let's go back to the stock. So there is your stock sound. We got the filter going on it. The LO, low pass. Get your high pass filter. But we can also get from the frequency out. Some fun. So that's how my modified DD6 sounds, both by itself and through uh, some sort of synthesizer. Um, I want to mention that there's over eight and a half million combinations possible uh, due to the matrix. Um, each one has a chance of being radically different. Some of them are are similar, but there's there's just over eight and a half million combinations, and you can never get bored with it. It's a it's a just a fun fun way of experimenting and developing sounds and rhythms and just noises and I can't wait to sample it into my MS tw or into my um my MPC 2000 get some good sounds out of that and uh put that in some beats I like making some fat beats and um yeah that's pretty much my uh my circuit bend for the uh Moogfest circuit bending competition for uh, 2014 and um I hope to make it out to Asheville if I uh, get selected as a top three and show it off and have some fun. Maybe uh, let Dan Deacon play with it, maybe. Shout out to Dan Deacon. I, I love his stuff, maybe. And um, if not, it's still a fun instrument. And um, I will put plans up on GitHub. or the uh, I'll put the source code up on GitHub and um, better pictures of schematics in the near future. So you could copy and replicate it yourselves because it's just a, such a fun... Uh, project and it could be applied to other instruments also and other circuit bends so it's a very uh multi-talented uh idea right here so enjoy and have a great rest of your 2014